When your child's chaotic behaviors are running your life, when you're struggling to find practical solutions, and just when you feel you've reached the end of your rope, there comes Harmonious Clan Podcast, equipping you with the proven practical strategies we've developed over the years through our own experiences to bring you strategies that give you results, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding and your clan from chaos to harmony. Welcome to Harmonious Clan Podcast. This is our series, Is This Behavior Really Out of the Blue? This series includes three episodes that will help you understand if behaviors are really out of the blue. In episode one, we'll introduce out of the blue behaviors with a story from our own life. We'll show you that those behaviors are not really out of the blue, and we'll introduce the ABCs of behavior. In episode two, we'll discuss more about the ABCs of behavior, how you can use the ABCs to help modify your child's behavior patterns by helping them build the skills they need in these situations, and by understanding the antecedent events that trigger the undesirable behaviors. And in episode three, we'll discuss the path from chaos to harmony. We'll contrast the chaotic path, being reactive to the behavior, versus the harmonious path, identifying antecedents and being proactive. Make sure to listen to all three episodes to learn the strategies that will bring your clan from chaos to harmony. Visit our website at www.harmoniousclan.com to get a copy of our podcast download, Understanding and Working with Behaviors Before They Start. Harmonious Clan equips you with our books, educational podcasts, a supportive community, courses, speaking events, and one-on-one consulting, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding, and your clan from chaos to harmony. Welcome to Harmonious Clan Podcast. I'm Marco. I'm Louisa. And we are in episode three of our series, Is This Behavior Really Out of the Blue? And it is not, as we found out in our other episodes. In the last episode, we looked at how to identify the antecedents to a behavior and the ABC that we call the ABC of behavior, behaviors. A is the antecedent. So we talked a lot about how do we identify these antecedent events or triggers that um, could set off specific behaviors in your child that are not appropriate behaviors. Purpose for that is that you want to be able to look at these antecedent events and you want to be able to identify those so that when you can take these things and there's a couple things you can do. One is if you are there and you see these things happening, these antecedent events, you can basically catch the behavior before it happens and get in there and try to modify it so that the behavior goes in the right direction. The other is to take these these triggers that you've identified and to use those to build skills with your child so that your child can learn when these things come up, when these antecedent triggers happen in the environment or for other children, that they have practiced these skills, learned these skills and gone through practice and maybe role playing and social stories and such so that they can use these skills to modify their behavior without your intervention, which is the ultimate goal. Because these triggers and things that happen in the environment and such are going to be there the whole life for this child as they become an adult. So they need to build these skills. They need to understand how they themselves can can modify their behaviors based on these triggers that they're seeing in their in their environment. Let's talk about the contrast. Yeah, so today in today's episode is our uh, what we call our contrasting episode. We're going to look at a chaotic path and the harmonious path. The harmonious path of course is what we advocate and that's applying these strategies and techniques that we talked about in episode 1 and episode 2 to get a modified behavior that's an acceptable behavior. The chaotic path is if you basically accept this, quote, out of the blue behavior as a real out of the blue behavior, that there was no particular trigger or anything, and you just become reactive to those behaviors. And in those situations, that doesn't always lead to the what you want, to the yeah. proper outcome. It's going to, you may be reactive when these events happen and say, well, this keeps happening. And you start getting frustrated and you start acting in a way that negatively enforce, reinforces the behavior. Basically, you're reinforcing this out of the blue behavior rather than sitting there and taking a breath and taking the time to analyze what's going on. So we're going to look at those two paths and compare and contrast those two paths, like what you do in the chaotic path and the outcome you get, and what you do in in the harmonious path, which is what we advocate, and and the kind of results that you get in that case. So why don't you go over what happened in our story and what the problem was? Okay, so just to recap then, um, from our series here, is this behavior really out of the blue? We started off and talked about a situation with our child where he punched another child, quote, out of the blue, or that's the report we got from the, uh, you know, from the leaders of this uh, event that he was at. It's a weekly event that he goes to. 
this happened several times where the situation would come up and we come back and they say, oh, he was doing this or he was doing that or he shouldn't have been doing this. And sometimes we get called in the middle of the event. Other times it'd be, him. other times when you go pick him up and you're thinking, boy, we didn't hear any calls or no texts or anything. And then we get there and we, oh, we hear the story. It's like, oh, okay, I was expecting that. So after a while with that, we started um, looking at the situation and analyzing and studying what was going on by sitting in, the, in these events with him and seeing what was really going on that was causing these behaviors because we're both engineers at heart and uh, we both, analyze <laughs> we both like to analyze things. So when we look at this, the same thing, it's like, okay, what is really going on? Why is he acting this way? Because he doesn't always act that way. There are times, you know, at home where he's fine and other situations he's fine, but there's certain things that were causing these behaviors. And these are called uh, antecedents, antecedent events. And we talked about last time the, the behavior ABCs, the antecedent event, the B, the behavior, and C, the consequence of that behavior. And last time we talked about the antecedents, understanding these antecedents. And if you don't identify these antecedents, you you really don't have anything to to sink in, sink your teeth into and to work on with your child because you just say, okay, well, he these are out of the blue behaviors. They're going to happen. Just I'm just going to deal with them when they come up. But then you start realizing they come up all the time and, and you, your child's not making uh, any progress in, in dealing with these situations. So you have to go back and identify these triggers or these antecedents, understand that there are these antecedents and maybe there's some unmet needs that are going on with your child that you can address. Right. And we talked about that over the last two episodes. And in this episode, we're going to focus more on... Contrast. The Yeah, compare and contrast two different ways of thinking about these behaviors. And of course, in episode two, we talked about our solution, which was to study these antecedents and to build the skills in your child and work with your child so that they can address these things on their own. So we want to look at, okay, what if you took what we call the chaotic path, which is you accept these behaviors, that they happen, you become reactive to them, right? Right. And the other path, which is the harmonious path that we are advocating is to study the situation, understand and build the proper skills so that these inappropriate behaviors as a result of these antecedent triggers become fewer and fewer as you go on and your child builds the skills and builds the confidence to be able to deal with these things on his own and participate in these social events and activities. Right. In the chaotic path, which is something that's easy for all of us to fall into, is when you accept the out of the blue behavior as being out of the blue and you accept that behavior, you're being reactive to the behavior. So is your child. Your child who is initiating the behavior also is being reactive to the situation. It's almost like he's reacting to his own behavior of suddenly punched a child. I'm pretty sure he never meant to do that. But he's also reacting to that. So when when you accept them as out of the blue behavior, you're not in the driver's seat. You are being reactive as opposed to being proactive. And because it's out of the blue, there's absolutely nothing you can do. So you so you're saying in this when these situations happen you get these behaviors if you are just being reactive and saying hey these things happen I don't know why it was out of the blue uh, uh, and you and you just do something to your child like tell them, oh you shouldn't be doing that or whatever and of course the child doesn't want to do those behaviors it's part of what's going on in the background so but if you if you were just become reactive and accepting of these behaviors then in effect you are perpetuating that right is that what you're saying yes you are and both you and your child are going to curl up in a tiny little fur ball and just want to hide underground somewhere and i know this because i've been there and i know this because i know my son was there too one it is absolutely detrimental to your child's self-esteem to continue to have inappropriate behaviors that are result of because he doesn't know how to deal with the situation which is most the case the chaotic path, we have walked that path, actually. The result was our child was absolutely crushed in his self-esteem from the perspective of, am I a good person? Am I really worthy? I mean, to a point, he's, he actually started to accept that things that other children can have, he doesn't deserve. Activities that other children are allowed to participate, he is not allowed. He, by default, does not deserve. He, by default, does not go to those things because he can't, because he's different, because it's a terrible path to walk down. Well, wouldn't, um, wouldn't you say also with that chaotic path, not only is it his own self-esteem, it's the, the image he portrays to other 
other people and people start labeling your child inappropriately, oh, as yeah. I would say, but yeah. but as the quote problem problem child, right? Right. We have experiences where eventually everybody in his group um, on this particular activity that he goes to or a camp that he goes to, we have experiences where eventually when people start playing the games, people start forming a circle, naturally your child doesn't get into the circle. Naturally, no one deals a card to him. No one gives him a card. No one gives him anything. It just becomes a default. It is how he sees himself, which is he's not part of the circle. And it is how everybody else sees him, which is, oh, no, he just sits there. No, he doesn't participate. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. He, he yeah, every time we play this, he sits in the corner. So, so you would say the ramifications of having, of taking this chaotic path of just accepting that these behaviors happen and being reactive is too pronged, right? I mean, yeah. it's impacting him as a his self-esteem internally, right? but also externally, it's impacting how people view your child. Which then yeah. becomes a cycle onto when people view him as the odd one, when people view him as the one who always starts screaming, the one who always starts doing that, or the one who doesn't play with us then the more they're going to push him. And then the more your child is going to feel like, well, I don't belong here. I'm not part of them. No, I'm not good enough. No, I, I don't do this. No, they, they all do, but I don't. And it yeah, becomes, it becomes a, a, bad a downward cycle. spiral that's going to continually erode his self-esteem. Yeah, I talk about and that. And probably now. cause more of those behaviors. That, yes, it does. Right. I talk I talk deep, much deeper in, in my book about how the why is it important to address these behaviors because it's not just a behavior that's annoying to you or other people it deep down creates um, a sense of who he is for that child it deep down makes him the person he is yeah so not only do people externally start labeling him he starts labeling himself yeah that and he can't do things and he causes problems and he's just a troublemaker when he goes somewhere he's going to do something and he's going to start almost expecting himself to behave that way. Right? Yes. And yeah. then of course he's going to behave that way because that's me. I go places and I cause trouble. And that's when you're in the end of that hole. But you know what? Don't worry. We've been at the end. We've been at the bottom of the hole. As a parent, I've also been one of those parents that just don't want to see anybody when I drop him off. Don't want to see anybody when I pick him up because it's such a... I'm, wouldn't use the shame, but it's just like, you know what? Well, yeah, yeah okay. Can I just <laughs> like, curb those myself? are the parents no. of that kid. <laughs> it's just, okay, stop looking at me. Um, there's stuff going on that I can't explain. Okay, yeah. Um, it's just, I just want to curl into a ball. I mean, I've done that. I've, I've done that where... Um, I would break and, down. <laughs> and we talk more about that in, in our in our series about that, right? Right. Where, where we talk about, yes, this is my child. <laughs> oh, yeah. There is that series that, you, series that you definitely have to listen to. No, it is, yes, it is your child and you need to walk out and be proud and just listen to that series. But right now, for this chaotic path, you cannot go down on that path because you'll end up with yourself in the ball and your child in the little fur ball. And no, there is no underground that you can hide under, okay? You as a parent need to live your life. Your child as a child needs to live his life and his, the whole adulthood. I mean, talk about the adulthood. No, you can't take that path. That is a chaotic path that will lead you to some long-term issues. And if you feel that you're on the bottom of it, hey, there is hope. We've been and the bottom yeah. of it. I've been the ball, the fur ball that wanted to go underground and my child has been, but let's talk about the harmonious path. Well, just before we go there, so the, what we're saying is if you take this chaotic path, basically being uh, somewhat passive and reactive, yes. like accepting that these behaviors are out of that. the blue, there's really nothing you can do about it and you just react to it when it happens, that you are creating, um, basically you're reinforcing the behaviors and you're creating this this image of your in, of your child, both internally from your child and externally, that he is the problem child. In effect, you're compounding the issue. Yeah, right? and the side effect is isolation. Big, yeah. big yeah. side effect is isolation. Your child is out. I mean, if you're on the soccer team, if you're whatever, your child is out and that's not okay. Okay, so let's go back with the harmonious path. No, so okay, what? well, the harmonious path, as we talked about in our previous episode, the path we chose is that you go and you study the antecedents. Again, antecedents is what's triggering the behavior. It is the thing that happened right before the behavior. You have to study that. Just while nothing was happening, quote unquote, 
this out of the blue happened, you need to study the quote unquote while nothing was happening. You need to go back there and see what really was happening during the nothing was happening. Yeah, because we we were on the chaotic path for a while, right at the beginning, because we're kind of like, well, yeah, we didn't understand what was going on. And we, we lived through it. And we, we realized, hey, he's not getting any better. These reports are getting more frequent. Yeah. Um, the behaviors are not changing. And then we realized, well, okay, we, we really need to look at it and, and address things properly. And that's what we did. And we talked about in the last episode, which is our harmonious path is, is the strategies that will help you move along this harmonious path. Right. right? So yeah. the idea behind the harmonious path, I mean, our message to you is empowerment. Our message to you is be productive. I mean, no, not productive, be proactive. There's something you can do about it. Do not accept that as an out of the blue. One, it is not out of the blue. And two, because it's not out of the blue, there's absolutely something you can do about it. In our case, we study what the needs are that were unmet. There were environmental stimuli that were too much. There were skills that were lacking. For example, he doesn't know how to tell the child, hey, you know, back up, you're too close to me. No, I don't like you waving your hands in my face. No, I, I don't like doing that. Okay, I'm bored. I need something to do. So wouldn't you say that most of the behaviors that you see that are inappropriate are because of some unmet need, whether it is a, uh, an internal need of the child or one of these uh, one of these antecedent type yes. of triggers, right? Yes. So it's um, not just in this particular case, but in general, that is most behaviors come from an, an unmet need in yes. some, some aspect. Parents, let's understand this. Our kids, as awful as we think they are sometimes, they are sweet and they want to please you. That is the way a child is. I mean, you are the parent, you are, they, they look up to you, they want to please you, they want to meet your expectations so badly, they don't want to do anything to upset you. Believe it or not, no, they don't. When the behavior happens that is out of your expectation, there's, there's always a reason. There's always a reason, there's always a problem. You need to look into that. And it's not, it's not always easy, right? We found going through this, this journey with our children that each have different different types of issues but you know it's, sometimes it's very very hard to remember that that sweet child that's underneath but you know they are yeah. and and these behaviors are all external things and because of some unmet need and and as an as a parent you need to you need to understand that and understand these behaviors are not on purpose they're not trying to purposely uh, hurt other people or not trying to purposely make life difficult and frustrating for you there is something going on there is yeah. some trigger there's some unmet need and it, and it is our obligation as a parent or a caregiver to to understand that and to see and remember that that sweet child that's underneath because they all are and they all want to do the best they can do and you need to be there to to nurture that yes you you and then the sensitive high needs child Many things are that many more times more difficult for them to do compared to a another child. So you need to understand that you're going to send them to the battlefield. Every day they wake up, they're in the battlefield already. Give them something, give them some tools. The impact of the harmonious path, the path that we are uh, proposing you take, is you get less and less and less over time out of the blue behaviors. And then your child is confident because he's prepared with skills and he also is not thrown into a situation without any support. Well, I think too, when you say, because you prepare him with skills and you understand yeah. what's going on, when you say he's going to be more, more proactive yeah. um, at when these situations come up, correct? Yeah. Well, you tell him, yeah, you're going to go into the, this deli and cafe and everybody's going to be there in the midst of it. And people are going to be in your face. What do you do? I mean, you let him know what's going to happen. And you also build the skills. Now, this building the skills, no, it's not only five minutes before you drop it off yeah. and you talk to him about, no, yeah. this is over months, over years, that eventually he may come up to the child and be able to say, please, back off from me. I, I don't like what you're doing here. You know, he it, it takes forever for, for these children to come out of their cocoon. But you're, you know, you need to look at your effort in terms of a year from now, two years from now, where was he and where is he now? What would you say too, when you start seeing these proper and proactive types of behaviors, you need to be able to acknowledge those in your child as well, because all this time he's been kind of conditioned to, oh, I'm, I'm going to, behave improperly and this and that and I, I'm the bad child and I'm the one that causes problems so when you start seeing these like we've seen with our, oh, yeah. our child you need to be able to 
be there and reinforce them and say, I saw that you actually talked to that other boy today when he was doing something to you. And, you know, I'm so proud of you because he really needs to get that enforcement to reinforce these proper uh, responses to these uh, triggers. And as you do that, you start seeing, as Louise is saying, on this harmonious path, fewer and fewer of these behaviors. And occasionally you start seeing, yeah, it, it, like it's not it's not going to happen right away, but you start seeing, okay, he did it one time today. He talked to the child who was who was bothering him. And maybe the next time he, you know, he, he does it twice during a, a class or whatever. But you you have to see these things and you have to be there to to support him when you do see these things happen. Yeah, you know where to get more tips on how to like, how to talk to your child and how to make every little effort far more powerful. Mm -hmm. In my book, I talked about that. Yes, in the book. And we we have a series on that as well. So. Yes, extensively on when you finally see a tiny little bit of effort, how do you magnify it so that your child is you know, is that much more empowered based on one tiny little action that he did. We talk about that. Oh, as far as the skill building and such, so it, it, it takes time. Uh, social stories help a lot, right? You said the social stories were were uh, very good where you practice these scenarios with your child and maybe make little books like we do to to show him and work, walk him through these things so that he can uh, understand how he should um, how he should respond when these triggers happen, right? Yes. And then so, I think basically he's going to find out that he can you know, he can be part of the group and he can participate. And that's what you want. You want to build that self-esteem. You want to build that thought process. You want him to relabel himself as a child that I can do this. And yeah. maybe I struggle, but I can. So I'm going to summarize the difference, the contrast between chaotic path, the chaos path, and the harmonious path. Mm -hmm. The chaos path is when you accept these behaviors as out of the blue and you just continue to react to it. Um, the outcome is you're in a low ball, in a low fur ball, your child is in a low fur ball. No, no fur balls. We don't want fur balls. We want a harmonious path where you are an empowered parent. You're there supporting your child's needs and your child is an empowered child. He will no longer, well, over the years, over the months, he will have less and less and less of those out of the blue behavior. He'll feel far more confident about his capability to navigate social situations or any situations. Okay, so this uh, wraps up our series. Is this behavior really out of the blue? And we hope you enjoyed it. We did talk about a particular situation. We looked at um, some of the practical strategies that we've learned over the years with our children that work. We talked about what the outcome is with when you apply these these uh, strategies. And uh, we just wrapped up with Louisa here telling us about the, the contrast between going a chaotic path, which is being accepting of what's happening and being reactive. Fur balls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and basically shielding at your child. And the harmonious path where you are are looking at these events and are moving forward with your child, building the skills, building his self-confidence so that he can be an active participant in these events and have the self-confidence he needs to be able to do these things on his own throughout his life. So we hope you enjoyed the series. Send us some feedback. Let us know what you thought. If you have any questions or concerns, we appreciate you listening. Oh, download resources. Download resources. When we talk about lots of um, you really need to get down to study the antecedents on what's causing these behaviors. Go and download the resources. I have a list there about a list of all the possible antecedents there may be because the first several times that you sit with your child, you may never see <laughs> what really is going on. You may just, um, to us, that was the experience. It just looked like, oh, yeah, okay, well, nothing was going Oh, yeah, out of the blue, he punched somebody. But it takes some time. But I have in our resources there go download the sheet it's got a list of potential things to look for okay great so we hope you enjoyed listening to this series we hope it was helpful for you and if uh, it can help you and your child that's what we're here for we're advocating for you to learn from our experiences and be able to uh, work with your child so they can be more successful thanks for listening thank you for listening to harmonious clan podcast series is this behavior really out of the blue we illustrated the problem of out of the blue behaviors with a story from our own clan discussed how to apply the ABCs of behavior, the outcome we saw, and why the solution works. And then we took a look at the path from chaos to harmony, contrasting the chaotic path, being reactive to the behavior, with the harmonious path, identifying the antecedents and being proactive. Harmonious Clan, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding, and your clan from chaos to harmony. Please visit our website at www.harmoniousclan.com 
to get a copy of our podcast download, Understanding and Working with Behavior Issues Before They Start. You can also get the podcast notes, learn more about us, and get information about joining the clan. You've been listening to Harmonious Clan Podcast with Marco and Louisa. Learn more about Harmonious Clan at www.harmoniousclan.com. For information on resources including books, educational podcasts, a supportive community, courses, and one-on-one consulting. Harmonious Clan, enabling you to nurture your child from outcast to outstanding, and your clan from chaos to harmony.